Hello everyone, it is Doc Hitchcock, and today we're gonna to do something a little different. We're gonna do something a little new. We're gonna put a new spin on how we solve puzzles, and that is by marrying science with puzzles, because science is a puzzle. It's what I do for a living is science, and puzzles is what I do for fun. So I put out a questionnaire to see if you guys would wanna actually see some of the science that I do. Should I make some videos on it? And the answer from a lot of you was yes. In today's video, we're gonna be solving this guy. And I believe this is from Belgium. If you look at the stamps on here, you can see that it's the country shape of Belgium as well as the impressionist painter. I can't remember his name right now. I'll put it on the screen right here in editing. <laughs> Um, but it's the guy with the apple in, in front of his face. So how are we gonna marry science concepts with puzzle solving in a way that's actually not boring? I thought what I'll do is kind of marry the idea of what the puzzle we're solving is to a concept in science, and then see how you guys react to that. And of course, leave in the comments if you like what I'm doing or if you dislike what I'm doing, be nice about it, of course. Anyhow, if you look at this puzzle, this is what I believe is the first design released by a designer whose name is Martin Hospislach. And now, forgive me if I mispronounce that. He runs this company, this new uh, puzzle design company, I guess, Smart Mart Productions or Smart Mart Puzzles. And uh, so you can see that this puzzle comes with a little packing slip here that has uh, the rules of the puzzle and such on there. But it's really cool because I actually almost threw this out because I thought it was the, the packing slip for the puzzle from the shipper. But actually even the box that came had this branding. So I think he's just using a lot of immersive detail, which I really appreciate. Anyhow, you can see it looks like a package with tape and they got the stamps and the address here. And of course it has the address of where I may or may not reside, which is Buckingham Palace. I'll let you guys decide whether or not that's accurate. So what does a package have to do with science? Well, in cell biology, when we think of how a cell packages certain things and sends it off to other cells in order to communicate, we have a term that is exosome, and it's spelt this way. And so an exosome is basically where a cell takes part of its own membrane, which is basically its skin, if you will, and it basically pinches off a little piece of it. And here's a diagram of kind of how that happens. And so there's a lot more technical terms around how this actually happens within the cell and how it's spit out. But the thing is, the interesting thing is that when it gets this package sent, it has little biomarkers, little receptors, little proteins that are in this lipid bubble-like skin that is like, the skin is like the cardboard of the cardboard box and the little receptors and such are like the stamps. They tell the exosome kind of what to look for as far as which cell to deliver the package to. But anyway, let's talk about what's inside the package and why this is interesting. And then we'll get into the puzzle solve. But it's interesting because when you look at the contents of what's inside these little packages, it's actually protein, so cell signaling molecules. Um, however, they also put genetic information, which is the, one of the most fascinating parts of this. Little things called mRNAs and miRNAs and such, these are basically little pieces of genetic information that tell the recipient how to make certain proteins or how to stop making certain proteins. And they actually can change the behavior of the recipient cell. These exosomes, these packages, are based on the conditions in which the cells are grown as well as the cells that send these packages. So if you can see here, there's a diagram here that shows that these exosomes can have all these different characteristics based on who makes these packages or who sends these packages and what the packages contain and also what stamps are on the package. And so basically, you can see here that there's some great benefits to some of these exosomes, like helping with cell proliferation, helping with healing. But there are also some very dangerous things that they do um, based on certain cell types. So for instance, a cancer cell also secretes exosomes and these packages that the cancer cell secretes can actually add to its ability to metastasize or spread throughout the body. But that's the same thing with packages in general, right? They contain many different things and they can go many different places. But now let's get into what most of you probably signed up for, which is solving this puzzle. And this is going to be a complete solve and some of the reset. 
And so keep advised that there will be spoilers. You have been warned. All right, so let's get solving. As you can see, we have my address here at Buckingham Palace. And uh, yeah, so what was very interesting is when I opened the box this came in, I actually saw this packing slip. And I thought that that was, uh, basically I just thought that this was a real packing slip and I was about to throw it away. Then I noticed it was open. I actually noticed that it wasn't really a packing slip. It was very cleverly disguised uh, instructions. And so basically it's saying here, it is mail call. That is goal number one, remove the tape. Goal number two is open the lid. Goal number three is find your number. Goal number four, fully reset the puzzle, making sure everything is placed back where you found it. Instructions one, no spinning. Instructions two, no prying, no banging, no unreasonable force, no external tools. All dimensions are precisely designed. If something does not really fit somewhere, it is not supposed to. It is strongly recommended to solve over a tray with standing edges, failing to do so at your own risk. And that's because there's probably little pieces. Anyhow, let's get into actually solving this. And as you can see, there's some little details. We have a nameplate with an address here. And you can see we have some stamps here that look like they're buttons. And I can see that, they're, you know, you can push this one back and forth. This one, you can see in the back here, we have uh, little buttons and there's like a little two and a little one there. I'm not sure what that's for, but you can see the, this one you can push in, this one you can't. And then you can see on this side, we have a couple of hex screws, little button there. In the back, you have another little button and these two buttons we saw already. You have a little fragile symbol that wiggles a little bit. You have a hole in there. And then on the bottom, you have a little hole in there and it looks like a little trap door. So there's lots of clues of what we can start doing. And what you can hear is something in there rattling. It sounds like a whole lot of beads. <laughs> I'm not sure what that's supposed to be or if it's part of the puzzle or what, but we will find out. I'm not sure exactly how the best way to get started is other than just push everything <laughs> and see what happens. And here you can see there's like little separations here. You see that moves? All right, so this moves here. This side does not move up and down. All right. Oh, okay, so this came out. That's pretty cool. Let's see if I push it back in. Oh. There must be some sort of magnet involved here, but that's pretty cool. So this, take a look at that. So actually this one, you can see there's a bit of a, a dovetail mechanism there. Can, uh, yeah, a little, little bit of a dovetail, which means that these probably come apart somehow. And then there's a little hex bolt in there. And these are hex bolts as well. Although this one's smaller, so that probably means there's two little drivers or something. So I'm wondering if the tool to open any of these comes out maybe this hole or this hole. Oh, I don't know if I did that, but, uh, or this hole. So maybe by pushing these buttons, we can open one of them. All right, so I haven't had any luck finding anything out other than this, pushing this out. But I was playing with these screws or these hex bolts and I did find out that this one becomes loose when you twist it with your fingers while the other one does not. So I'm not sure that's what's intended but I'm going to, I don't think, I'm hoping that that's part of the puzzle solve and that nothing's going to come loose unintentionally so I'm going to unscrew it and see what happens. All right, uh, it's pretty long. Oh, there we go. Looks like you're just a pretty standard hex screw. Let's see. Yeah, ha! It was part of the solve. So this is a little hex key or Allen wrench or whatnot. And doesn't, yep, it's a little too small for this one, but it looks like it's going to fit this one. So let's try it on this one. Let me take that out. Okay, let's put these up here. I don't know if we're using them again, but you never know. And I can't use this to get this out because it's too big, or the bolt's too big. 
Oh, and there we go. There's that little dovetail detail. All right, put that aside. So we can see inside there. You can see there's a little, uh, let's see. Maybe if I push this back in, I can pull this up maybe, let's see. Oh, no, but it's pushing that out. Hmm. Oh. Oh, look at that. Oh, look, there's the little magnets, probably how that was interacting. Oh. That came out. Oh, another little Petrus piece. All right. Okay, look down there. Really, just you can see okay, the mechanism kind of just not really the mechanism, but you can see how it was held in by a magnet type of thing. So I wonder now if we can, ah, it moves down, All right? So I was thinking it was gonna come off, but it actually just moves down. And then this moves, yep, it's like a puzzle box now. And then I guess this moves up. Oh, <laughs> I love it. I love it. You've got mail. The little fragile thing came off. That was pretty fun. Oh, and then there's a little, another bolt so we could probably, that's probably how we get the tape off. Well, that's so fun. You've got mail. You know, finding this little tool so far has been the most difficult part. Other than that, it's been pretty straightforward so far. Which does not take away from the fun of the puzzle. Sometimes, I don't know if you guys remember the ice block puzzle. But that one was one where it was relatively easily easy, but super satisfying, super fun to solve. Same type of feeling where it's pretty straightforward, but I'm having a lot of fun solving it so far. All right, so I just pulled that off. Does that mean I can pull this off all the way? Or? Uh, I don't know what I just did. So if I push that in, I thought I could push that back down, but I taking the screw out, I think I'm changed something. Oh boy. What did I do? Turn this? Oh, look at that. Now I can turn it. Before I tried turning it, I did not get that to happen. So somehow this is freed up. Just keep turning it. Uh, looks like there's gonna be something in there. No. I mean, there's a hole in there, so I'm wondering, see the hole? So I'm wondering if, I don't know if something's supposed to come out. It looks like there might be a hex screw in there. Oh, that, oh, I just <laughs> knocked everything across trying to do it. Oh, there we go, look at that, guys. It's raising up. Let's just keep maybe turning it and seeing, oh, maybe I just could take it out now? No, maybe I need to turn it just a little bit more. This has to, oh, look at that. This is actually starting to come out a little bit. Oh. That's what it was, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't notice, I, I noticed, notice, remember how that was upside down? So the fragile was right side up. When it popped off, this was upside down, which is a clue that to get this out, you have to have this upside down because this ball bearing was holding it in place. So as long as you were this way, it was holding it in place from popping out. So we did that right. We had twisted that, it let it go, but the ball bearing was holding it in place. Very clever. Love it. And so I'm assuming these come out now. Yep. All right. That was, that was pretty fun. Oh, look, that comes out now. I'm not sure if I want to take it all apart. I'm scared that I won't be able to get it back together. <laughs> but let's see. The tape comes out, I guess. Uh, uh oh. Maybe I need to do this. This stuff. Work with this stuff to get the tape out. Oh, there's like a little pin in there, too. Where'd that come from? Oh, is it? Are those supposed to come out? That pin? Oh boy. Am I breaking the puzzle? I'm assuming that was what was holding this. 
I'm guessing that was driven by this somehow. I do not know. It's a mystery. Okay, so I have had zero luck getting this off. So I'm now focused on whether I can get anything else off. There's some magnets down here, but these aren't strong enough. It repels all four corners. Wait, yeah, all four corners except for this one. But it's not strong enough to get it off. By finding that there's one here, Hear that? So I think I'm push, maybe if I push it down and get, there you go. Ah, and there is this little button here. that allows me to take this off. So that's now most of the tape off. Let's see. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so now uh, it's making sense why we had the one, two, because now we have three, four, and it looks like there's a little bit of a place to put a screw in there. So I'm assuming that's for pulling. And then this one doesn't have that. So let's see if I push. Ah, look at that. So it's like a little bit of a, I, what is that, a maze? I'm not sure if this is another, maybe we can swap these, maybe this goes in there. Okay, so I think that screw is just further down than this one. I guess it's because this one is uh, a shorter screw and it's telling us that we can put that one in this one. Okay, so I just noticed that there is a little hole right there and there's a pin in there just like these. Oh, this one's longer. So I don't know if I've been, I don't know if that was being held in place. I mean, I wasn't doing it upside down, so <laughs> I'm not sure what that's all about, but uh, I mean, it's a little pin. So maybe it was holding this thing in place. Look at that. The name place came off. It was, it was the little cutout thingy there, undelivered mail, <laughs> which interestingly is what I got from another puzzle undelivered mail that I had ordered. That's cool. I don't know what that name plate. Okay, there's a little, okay, there's a little ball bearing that came out, which means, oh geez, where'd that come out of? Here? Okay. Does that mean now it needs to go in here? I think so. Well, let's do that later. And then this littler ball bearings, there's two different sizes, see? This one came out of that, of this. And this one just came out of there. It looks like they both fit in there. I'll just hold off a sec. I think we need to finish this first. There we go. Part number three. And we got the Belgium. Okay. So now we should be able to slide this off, please. Yes, we are. Oh, look at that, guys. And fond memory of cubic dissection. This is a limited edition version that's gonna be given, I think, this uh, orange tape in memory of cubic dissection. All right, so, I'm not really sure how to take this next step. I'm assuming that this is the lid. To open the lid of the box. Let me make sure, I mean, it could be this. So, the question is, I put those ball bearings in there. And then this little one. Okay. Does it have anything to do with these pins? Let's see, because now I've got three of them. No? Still kind of out of reach. So I wonder, maybe, oh, maybe you got to do it in some sequence. So let's put these two pins in. And then maybe these guys. All right. No. Okay, so look, it does open. 
slightly, but it's, it feels like something is in the way. Let's see if that works again. Oh, it just automatically opened. Glory hole, no balls, no glory. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what that means in Belgium. <laughs> Um, I hope my nephews aren't watching. Okay, so I'm assuming maybe the pins go in there. Oh wait, look, there's another pin. So I think that might help us to stack up high enough. All right, so let's see, if I put this in here, falls right out the ends there. Ah, no? I don't know what that does or means. Oh, hold on a second. All right, so if we just open the lid, Find your number, okay? Find my number. And that's probably by going through the bottom. So let's see, no balls, no glory. Oh, oh boy. All right, so <laughs> this is tied right to that, but this is already open. Ah, I see what was happening because that pin that was in here also has a slot there. So when it's turned that certain way, the pin has to be all the way in the door for you to be able to open it. Okay, so, but that doesn't tell us why. No balls, no glory. So basically this just, put the ball in there, it's just gonna come out the hole in the front. And you put the pins in there, it's just gonna come out the bottom. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I've lost a couple of pins. Yeah. I've lost a couple of pins. Let's see if I put this in. No, something's stuck. Oh, something's stuck. I can feel something's happening there. Am I supposed to be pushing? Oh. <gasps> oh no! <laughs> uh. Oh, pesky packing peanuts. I should have seen that coming. I was wondering if that's what that was, and now they're everywhere. All right, so uh, I was resetting the puzzle and I came across a couple of things. So I didn't solve the last part, opening this panel quite right, and there's a couple of reasons why. Not sure exactly what got stuck that allowed me to push it open, but I talked to the puzzle's designer and uh, they told me that I indeed did not do it correctly. <laughs> and so the, I'm gonna show you exactly what they told me. And I found this mostly out because I had to use these to reset the puzzle. And I'll show you in a bit why, just because it'll be helpful for those who may wanna know. But one of the things he told me was that there actually should be three ball bearings and I only had two. And the third one was actually inside this piece here with the Belgium stamp. And so basically you can see here that there's a bit of give on this end part here. You just basically have to swing it and then turn it. And inside is a large ball bearing, which is actually magnetic, I believe, because, yeah, so I, um, not magnetic maybe, but uh, able to be attracted by a magnet. And by swinging it, you get it free. And so see, there's a magnet at the bottom there and the ball's on there and as you swing it, and that ball's keeping that from turning, when you, when you swing it, it frees the ball, goes into this little compartment and then you can open it up and get it out. All right, so that's where this comes into play here, where I was wondering why we had these when you, know, when you put the pins in, they tend to go right through to the other side here. Uh, somehow I got those caught in there and that allowed me to push uh, to get it out, I, I think that was just a anomaly. 
But what I noticed was this larger one, you can see that they're progressively larger, these three ball bearings. So in the no balls, no glory, if you put the largest ball in first, that one does not come out because there's not a, a size of tunnel for it to come out. And so then if you put the second one and then the third one in, they, they can't come out because that other one's blocking them. And then by pushing those pins in there, now they don't come out, see? The balls uh, have now blocked them. And I guess it's called a glory hole because that's what you gotta use in order to push open the compartment to solve the puzzle. And I'm not gonna open it because all of the uh, packing peanuts will come out. <laughs> but uh, that's how you do it. <laughs> Jeez. Oh man. I don't know why I was able to push that this time. But anyway, oh my gosh, they're everywhere. But here's the uh, mail call, 10 out of 25, limited edition, found our number. And then Burr Tools, I don't know what this is. So I am going to have to go and look at this QR code and see what that is. Okay, so it turns out that this QR code pulls up this file that looks kind of like this which is a bunch of gobbledygook in, to me. <laughs> but I think what it is, is it's a, it's a Burr solution file. And so I think that this goes into a Burr tools type application. I, I can't do it on my phone. So I'll ask the creator. Interestingly, it came with these little teasers. I don't know if it's for these packing peanuts to like individually put them somewhere. I don't know, but that's gonna be interesting to see what that's for. If I find out, I might film it. All right, be back in a bit. The part of the puzzle that these tweezers that come in the prize compartment, uh, you, is, you can see here there's a little nub there. Uh, you see there's a little nub at the tip there to hold this pin. Because inside of here, you can see that there's a pin that goes in there like that, but you can't stick it in this way. You have to stick it in through here. And if you don't have these tweezers, it's very difficult uh, if not impossible to get that reset properly. There we go. See? Can you see that? Let's see. See that peeking up through there? So I'm going to go ahead and turn that like that. And now it's in there. I'm going to put, this is where it actually gets caught into the puzzle. So I'm going to put that in there as well. And then turn it up right side up. And that should allow me to, yep, there we go. So what I'm gonna do is, so that part's reset, so I'm going to go ahead, go off camera, and do it all over again to reset it, and then we can discuss and review the puzzle. Okay, so guys, that was Mail Call. It was a fantastic journey, so much fun. Probably gonna be one of my favorites of this year, and it's only March, so who knows? But I will say that this has been such a, a great, experience with this puzzle and for it being the first puzzle i gotta say bravo bravo to martin because this was challenging but not so challenging that i got frustrated or had to put it aside for many many weeks uh, i will say there was that one little itty bitty part towards the end where i was able to unintentionally solve that part uh without doing it the correct way I don't know if I'll be able to reproduce the original way I solved it, and so I'm glad I know the, the real way, the intended way. And uh, I'm also glad I asked because that little detail of the ball that's hidden inside the burr piece, I wouldn't have even thought to look at that because I didn't know I needed another ball bearing. And so I'm so glad that I was uh, able to figure that out at the end. I would say that's the one little nitpicky thing. Other than that, so much fun. Great surprise at the end, even though I should have seen it coming. And overall, a delight to solve. This one is so much fun. I hope you all get a chance to solve it yourself. But if you can't get one or you don't want to for any reason, I hope you at least enjoyed solving it through my eyes. And I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about science while solving. And so until next time, I'll see you later. Goodbye for now.